All right, Trapper, we are at a bridge in a little different looking location. I'll uh, shine the camera out when we get out in a little more open area, but yeah, we're in the northern delta area of Mississippi. I set the first sets up yesterday. Didn't film any of them because, uh, well, they're pretty much the same setup as the south as any sets are anywhere. And if you watch my videos from last year, like this, like the fresh cut stick, we use it. I had it set exactly here in the same spot. I had to keep moving it, chasing the water, which is what I'll do this year. But uh, I took four or five beaver off this pretty much exact location last year. And you can see up there, there's an old caster mount up there, a lot of beaver tracks here as the water dropped. When I set it, my caster mount was there. Uh, I've had the trap way down here because I knew it was going to drop, and it did. I come down here a while ago. I forgot my camera. But anyway, the trap is gone anyway. I haven't pulled it up to see because I haven't got the camera. I hear something. Oh, dove flight. Let's see. Oh, I feel some weight. Oh, look at there. The first northern delta beaver. Solid hind foot catches like what I figured. I don't know when he got caught, but uh, I knew that water was going to be going down. Bang. There we go. Because everyone get that trap on. Oh, yeah, big old beaver. Don't look like it was caught too awful long ago. Still pretty jiggly. Just one of the standard caster mount sets. Now in other videos, you know, I said I don't start slamming caster mounds everywhere. I'll move this down to here. And I don't, except like on a river here, unless I can find a pull out or something. And around here, one, it's all flooded, but the brush is so thick. <sighs> kind of hard to find anywhere where they're coming to shore. It's kind of funny, you know they are, because they got to come and cut some brush to eat, but wherever they are, it's hard to find. So I do run caster mounds right off the get-go for the traveling beaver, and that's mainly what we're picking up, I think. Of course, you can see this is way flooded up. These trees are normally embanked. The main channel is that big dead tree there to that other little dead tree. You got that big rain that come through all oh, several days ago, and then you got all the landowners up here dumping, dumping their duck lakes, and uh, you get all that water coming in. Let's move this caster mound right down here. You kind of build it up a little bit more, slick it up. that chewed stick right there. And my, didn't notice my beaver caster lure getting a little thick. I need to thin it back down. But I'm about out of it anyway. Start another jar pretty quick. We just mainly put out coyote and beaver sets yesterday, a few coon sets. Today I'll be putting out more beaver sets and bobcat sets. Got another beaver set on the uh, opposite bank over there. We'll get over and check that out. Nothing in the MT bucket cubby with this water flooded way up here and the field edge right there. Every cat should be running through here along with every coon and every possum. I put a DP set on this side to uh, kind of protect that a little bit and uh, got us an old granner. He liked the caramel molish. I'm trying that on this property. Did the butterscotch last property. So new flavors, but so far he liked it. But so far today he's been the only one. All right, Trevor. Now here again, just a hundred yards from where we just got that possum. 
thought I'd point this out. This here is the forerunner of the M2 bucket cubby. I take these tubes, I find them actually up home. They have a real thinner sleeve that they wrap the irrigation pipe around. And I take it and cut that in half. This is a double walled, but anyway. And that's what I was using. But it's hard to carry them around, hard to, you know, get many of them in the back of a truck even. Some of my landowners up home would let me leave them as they did here. But still, they were just kind of pain. But from year to year, you know, it changes a little bit on where you want to set. So it was kind of hard just to keep one of these going. And that was the evolution to the uh, me using the bucket. So I got to thinking, I just need something to put some bait up in there. Having a one-way opening is even better. Because this one would have been pushed up against uh, that tree. It's been here for years. Um, it's grown over thicker now. It's not as good a bobcat trail. The trail would be more up that way. But I thought that bucket I said is, again, just right up there in a better location. So I don't use it, but anyway, that was the first thought of uh, the empty bucket cubby was that. And that come from piles of pipe on this same property about 12, 15 years ago. Uh, some uh, buddies of mine were from Pennsylvania down here trapping and scared a bobcat out of a pile of tubes. And they set it and it caught several bobcats. So that's how that all came about. But here we have a beaver. I was down here looking where I want to put a uh, caster mound, if I can find one, because this is where the old dam used to be. They actually tore it out. You can't really see the humps over there as good anymore, but it was just last year, but they're grown over already. But uh, when I was down here looking around, just right down here by a big old tree, one kept swimming, slapping his tail, swimming, slapping his tail. And I was like, well, I must have run him out of here somewhere because he knows I'm here. <clears throat> so I come up here and I seen the, you know, the notch in the bank, and I'm like, man, it looks like a beaver run. He didn't go very far. I got him wired off all the way over here, unless he broke the wire. But, uh, like, man, that looks like a beaver run. And uh, slapped a whole 330 in it yesterday, and that looks like a very big beaver. Uh, I don't fall in somewhere. <clears throat> and that is a very big beaver. And that is a very good spring trap you come out of there come on no oh, it won't come up out of there in the spring it got in there somehow hmm the safety lock there it goes locked up inside the spring Big old boy there. Big old boy. Damn, up there with mud. Huge old boy. Let me throw him on the scale when we get back. Yeah, he's still wired way over that root over there. Or that vine. Uh-oh. He's a very bad boy. Broke my triggers. A lot of coons running through here, but I don't like setting coon traps close to beaver traps. My experience and my thought, and I may be wrong, but is what it is, that they uh, scare beaver when they're caught there and fighting around. All right, that's still set there, a little cash amount I threw in here. Apparently caught him up there. Gotta redo it, because as you see, the water lines dropped considerably. All right, I'll get this remade. I'll go get another trap, replace that. Get on down the line. All right, trappers. Second morning up north here. Uh, checked two beaver sets. The one at the bridge where we caught the beaver the first morning. Nothing in either one of those two sets. I checked the channel set for otter back there. Empty bucket cubby back there. Nothing. So this is like the fifth, sixth check location today. It's a uh, empty bucket cubby. As you can plainly see the bucket there. It's not really disturbed too bad. A little fighting around. Somehow he got the uh, grapple loose and right here is our first north 
bobcat. See how good that dude's caught. Oh, he's caught good. Yeah, somehow he got the uh, chain loose. Oh, he broke off the little tree that it was attached to, it looks like. But, uh, because it's wrapped around that big tree out from the bucket. So he got it unwrapped, but that's one good reason to use drag. He's a pretty color, real light color, but, uh, just a flat cap. If you look at that old head, it looks more like a house cat than a bobcat, except for his little face and everything. But yeah, he's, he's a pretty flat cat. But we'll go ahead and get him harvested and uh, get on. He didn't like that word, did he? Get on down the road. Got a channel set right down in here. I'll check in a minute and see if we got anything in it. But we'll take care of him and we'll go check that set. All right, choppers. What we got here is a huge flooded field of standing corn, and there is corn in all that. Um, got timber behind us. Not very big. It looks bigger than it is. It's not very wide, maybe 100 yards or so. I've got three DP sets around this. And so far, I set them yesterday, of course, but so far this is the only coon that I've got. For down here, he's got a big, long, pretty tail. Big old boar coon, or at least a big old coon of some kind. Smile, bud. But yeah, this was beat down the coon truck, so I'm hoping to score a bunch. I don't know if they'll come through very good or not, but they don't leave a whole lot of track. They're not a heavy coon, but uh, hopefully we'll uh, see about a dozen or 15 come out of here in the next few days. Next place we'll be going is just right on the other side of that equipment. We've got two coyote sets over there. I could see one kind, and I don't think there's anything in it, but let's hope. All right, travelers, we are out here. Hope the wind ain't too loud with me moving. Out here in the middle of uh, wide open everywhere. I just jumped a coyote over there by Bobcat said he was nosing around. Anyway, it's a big open field. And if you look right up here, well, we got us a coyote jumping around. Pretty big one from here. Back foot caught. Pissing all over the place, I guess that's good. That was in a dirt hole. That other one that was over there should have been in that little scent post I made there. Big old coyote for down here. Technically not a bad looking coyote either. You sure? Sure made a good work of that set. Uh, try to get something in there. We'll get him taken care of and get the set remade. All right, trappers. There's my remake. We'll see what it does. Uh, just a no dirt hole. Didn't put any urine on the back of the little piece of the log because there's plenty of urine and smell around <laughs> you know some coyotes you're going to run into are circle shy i do hit that once in a while but not very often but uh, yeah for down here i'm very impressed with this old boy that's a i mean yeah he ain't worth crap on the before right he's just a little dribble of blood there just a little lung shot put him down real quick you gonna get blood everywhere. I'm not gonna skin him though, because he ain't worth anything, but anyway, we'll see if uh, we get any more at this set. Like I said, I do have a clean scent post over there, so I'm not too worried about it, but I think we'll connect here again. All right, trappers, had a little flooded still up ditch. I put a caster mound in. 
looks like over there one messing around last night but it also i can't see it dropped the water level would have been now here's my bait stick you know how i do that so it would have been up here it went down four or five inches my trap would have been about right there and well let's see if i can feel it i don't see the lock i don't feel the lock so hopefully down there in that deep murky water there's a beaver it looks like there might have been some sign up here so i'll scoot all this down move everything down holy smokers yeah all right let's hope for the best yeah i think there's some weight on there Boom! Uh, we got us a beaver. Another solid hind foot catch. Probably caught pretty early last night before it dropped too much. Looks like an old. Oh, my boot's slipping in the deep. Looks like an old standard data. Two year old. But look at that tail. For a two year old, he's been. Getting into some trouble. Dang juvenile delinquents. Alright. See how far that drops off? I mean, that just... Right there. Over my hip boots, a foot out from my... About a one foot out from my foot. over this way a little height. Now down in that old hard clay. Make me a bed because it's dropping off. Oh yeah. Definitely ain't no pocket. Definitely be a good hind foot catch as long as it don't drop too much during the day. Without any rain coming in these ditches, though, they will be dropping like a rock. I'm going deep with that boy. So deep I set it off. again Looks like there's a little ledge there get that out of there there we go I can put me a little indicator stick I had one but that's pretty deep I'm gonna get something in there I'm gonna tear off one of these green ones I just come on and eat that. Yeah, we'll try it. Find my rod. Find my lock. Put it on the trap side of the rod. I'm gonna slide this down a little more noticeable and accessible. Base hit slicker up. Put a little. No luscious beaver caster. Not much, but since I covered it, leave some on the stick. There, and I uh, thinned it up a little bit. It was starting to get a little thick on me. All right. I'll get him up in the, the buggy and go check a couple coyote check traps back here. All right, trappers. I don't know if it's going to come through, but there's that green stretch going through there. There's a crossover into this, over this ditch. Got three sets over there. A little trifecta of death. But uh, coming along up here. The trail coming out. Beaver. They're going into this flooded corn right here. Having a little corn snack. That one, he didn't make it. 3.30 up there just between them little trees and I don't know what he's doing over there because it's wired off over here but uh, whatever he chooses.
Good size, good looking beaver there. We'll get him pulled up out of there, get that reset, and get around the corner. I'm interested to see what uh, them three sets did. This afternoon, when we come back, I want to channel that up two or three times up through there for beaver and otter. That'll be later. We got this last beaver out just right around the corner, and it was a big one. He's a huge old boy. Nice furred. Here at my what I call my trifecta of death. It rated me a nothing in that set down there, but you can see the crossover how good it is. It goes in the little pocket of brush there. Problem is that conover was totally underwater yesterday. You couldn't see it. They had to actually swim up that underneath that brush pile to get into it. And you come over here, I don't know if you'll see it, but those sticks down there over another conover. Again, totally underwater now. It's barely half. And then another one here. Again, just a little underwater. The water dropped, oh, eight to ten inches. And they stop moving when it does that. They like flood water. They like moving the high water. They don't want to get caught up in some shallow stuff somewhere. They will come through here. Definitely an otter will be through here the next day or two before we get any rain. But uh, it will be a little slower than I wanted. My trifecta of death just didn't produce. So, uh, got more sets to go check. We'll catch you down the line. All right, back here at the trash ditch. That Cheeto's bag was exactly on top of my trap yesterday. The water dropped down another six, eight inches. I know I don't have a catch because I can see my trap in the mud. But on my high bank set, oh, we got a striped kitty. That nice old good looking skunk there for the market today but uh yeah i don't skin them especially around where i'm staying uh, they don't want to stank and neither do i yeah we'll get him out of there get her remade and on down the line we are down here along the flooded bayou yesterday uh didn't have nothing in the empty bucket cubby and today where you don't have anything had some leaves over the trap so i spruced it up and then yesterday we had a coon, or a coon, a possum up here, and today we have a coon. Again, not a bad boy. Unfortunately, these coat coons are like negative money compared to even regular coons. I'm going to stretch out there and kick back. All right, trappers. Uh, the evening cleanup, because I didn't get one done yesterday because it was way late. I just want to get my skinning down and gone. But, uh, I mean, it's a flat bobcat, but actually it's good light colored, real light colored. And for down here, that's some pretty good spots. And it's a good size cat. So I'll take that. Four beaver. Uh, and then a coyote, skunk, and three coons. So, all in all, not a bad day's catch uh, i got a lot more sets out today uh, we'll uh, hit that and uh, just let everybody know i was uh, trying to find two more weeks worth and i ended up made double booked i got two people calling me so it looks like we'll be down here at least through first week of april or so so we'll get a lot of trapping done we'll see you guys in the morning <laughs>